out of common courtesy, I would um, explain things all the time anyway. Like I would say straight away, like, hey, you know, I've got, um, you know, like, you know, I've got a small, you know, I've got a small dick. Or I'd be like, oh, you know, I've got a pussy. Or... Know that you were intersex. It's kind of hard to tell if you're intersex normally um, at birth unless you have like your ambiguous genitalia is so ambiguous that you obviously notice that that you know that the person's a hermaphrodite slash intersex. Yeah. When I was born, um, I had a uh, large clitoris, um, but there was no actual um, immediate concern or anything like that. So I had a vagina and a big clitoris, but yeah. You were raised then as a girl. Yeah, I was raised as a girl. When did you notice there was a difference between you and the other girls? I thought I looked like a girl, but, you know, according to the whole of my school and everybody that's known me in the last 25 years, I look like a boy. There was nothing about me that screamed girl, other than the fact that I had a vagina hole. I had never, like, hung out with any of the girls. I had I'd never, like, like, interacted with them. I'd never related to them. Um, I always had a very raspy voice, um, I had no chest, um, I was like, I was, I was in football teams, I was in basketball teams, I was doing the best in all of my sports. Did that feel weird being di different from the other girls? Yeah, it was just a constant comment. I knew when PE or something was going to come up, something where it involved like sporty activities or anything to do with gym class. I knew that, you know, uh, the girls were going to start, you know. I wasn't allowed to get changed with them in their changing room or anything. Um, because even though, like, I say clitoris, I say that loosely. Uh, my clitoris is basically like a, a very small dick. I can swear? Yeah. Yeah, so it's so it's just it's just like it's just like a very you know um, small dick. It still has erections. Um, it still has. It's very veiny, and uh, yeah, I love it. So um, yeah, but obviously that was the conflict of interest all the time. It was the where to get changed, who to get changed with, who to get changed next to. Like who to, it was just constant like a battle, like a like double edged sword, twenty four seven. People's parents were coming up to me asking me like they were in shock. They were just like, "There's no way you're a girl. You're a boy." Um, you know, I got asked to put, lift up my shirt a lot, and obviously I had a very masculine chest. People didn't believe me. Um, you know, these are grown adults that would do this as well. And because of the way I am, I didn't see it as offensive. I just saw them as dumb. Because if I've told you that I'm one thing and you're telling me that I'm not another thing and you're like 30, 35, like, that's, that makes you look stupid. No offense. I think you're allowed to offend them. That's <laughs> did, but does, was that not feel embarrassing? Sometimes I would feel like, you know, maybe they're right. Like, am I a girl? Like, maybe this whole girl thing ain't for me. Um, and I think they'd be like once or twice where I'd maybe be like angry that they're asking these questions because um, there were some tough times. Like. Uh, in, 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 in every single um, lesson, every single lesson at school. Constant questions, constant questions. I couldn't ever focus on my lessons. I think I failed a few of my GCSEs just because of all the question asking alone. I was having really, really, really bad abdominal pains and uh, I, thought it would, my, I thought it might have been stones. I don't know what it could, it could have been anything. So I went up to Lurge Hospital and I got my um, uh, ultrasound done. Well, I had to wait for my ultrasound, I had to go to my GP, then I had to finally got my ultrasound, and then yeah, when they did the ultrasound, they saw the um, the testicles, which were placed like either side where you'd think like the ovaries would be, I guess. Just to break it down, so you had inverted testicles in yeah. the body. Yeah. Did you also have ovaries? Yeah, and ovaries as well. <laughs> in the body as well. Yeah. So at this point, you have everything. I had everything. I had everything. I had the I had the male and the female of everything. That moment when you get the Like everything made sense. I felt like everything made sense. I felt like, I felt like at the end of the day, I had a, I had a hunch. I kind of already knew uh, my need to want to be a boy, but then to want to be a girl didn't make sense neither to me. I just wanted to one minute, literally, just put on, you know, something nice, look like a girl, and then the next minute put on something really nice, look like a boy, because I could do both. 
<laughs> trust me, I was a beautiful girl. But obviously, like, I don't know. I just feel like um, I got so much respect being a man than I did being a girl. So I just thought to myself, well, I might as well be a man then. So a lot of my decision was swayed, which is sad to say, on other people's opinions, but it was also something that I knew that I wanted because I knew that if I would have stayed as a woman, I would have always thought, oh, what would life have been like as a man? If I stayed as a man, which I am now, I, I, I often sometimes, just sometimes think, oh, what would life have been like as a woman? Do you have a discussion with your parents then? About how did your parents feel? Um, you know, my mum and dad, have, especially my mum, okay? Uh, dad, you too as well. I know you've tried your hardest to be able to get your your head into terms with how you, how you, you know, we're gonna live as a family, you know, um, what about if I change my mind? But my mum has always been there, uh, you know, she came with me to all my appointments, uh, my endocrinology appointments, she came with me to all uh, the therapy appointments, uh, they were far, and she came with me to them, and you know, like we kind of celebrated it after each time, you know. This was kind of like um, her version of like, her son going through puberty and knowing that this is actually natural and this is normal, this is something we couldn't have helped. And, you know, she's been so supportive. Um, so yeah, I'm just really grateful about that. You know, my brother and sister, um, they, they don't know nothing. When they do find out, it will be from this video because obviously I've told them time and time again, but I don't think I've explained it to them in the way that, <sighs> it's kind of hard explaining to your brother and sister about you being born a certain way that they they don't even, you know what I mean? They don't know nothing about. When did you start living as a boy? Uh, about 13. So these are quite formative ages. What was dating like? Did you have to like explain things before sexual interactions? Yeah, so out of common courtesy, I would um, explain things all the time anyway. Like I would say straight away, like, hey, you know, I've got, um, you know, like, you know, I've got a small, you know, I've got a small dick. Or I'd be like, oh, you know, I've got a pussy. Or, or, I think, you know, because I'm into sex, I feel like, with men, they get the aura of a female. Even though you can clearly see that I'm a guy, they get the aura of a female. So they might be confused thinking, why do I, like, why am I starting to like this person? Why am I starting to like, like my, my, my emotions are changing, even though they're straight. And the same things happened with women as well. They're like, oh, so like, why am I like, this is when I used to just identify as just whatever. Um, it was like one of those kind of things where, and I realized that was because I don't think that they'd actually, um, quite understood to, its, to, 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 to full capacity that I'm a boy and a girl. So if a guy was to kind of fall in love with me, then I suppose he'd be straight. And if a girl fell in love with me, then I suppose she'd be straight or bi or something, I don't know. I don't really research this stuff. Is sex different but for, with different genders? Definitely, sex is definitely uh, different with different genders. Um, so with men, it would be more of a, um, Less passionate, it would be, uh, we're gonna have sex, bye, gone, I'll be at the door. Um, and then with women, it was more uh, romantic, you know, I'd be the guy, you know what I'm saying, I'm putting it down, it would be, it, it's, I, I, I think I prefer sex with women. But the feeling with men when I had a vagina hole was nice, like, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> it was really nice, but like, women give you something that men just don't give, I don't think. So when you, were, when you were 15, you, were, you wanted to live as a man. Mm. So what has to happen now? So I got sussed on. So it winds up your face more. Um, it, I went from a size seven to a size 10 and a half. And of course, obviously it gives you more boners. You get a boner like every single morning, like a regular guy would anyway. Um, you get very hairy, like everywhere until then your face then becomes like really hairy. I loved it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I was just, every set, like, I, oh, I, it was the best times of my life, actually. I'm not even gonna lie. The best times of my life. I looked amazing. And I kept my, I kept my, I, I was going to the gym every day. I was really using the testosterone to build what I think should have been built. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, maybe a little while ago, do you get what I'm saying? So it was a thing where I was just using the testosterone to the best of my advantage. Um, you know, I, um, I had more stamina. Uh, I was uh, horny every day, so it was just beautiful to actually feel those feelings. It was be it was really nice. So can you tell us what surgery entails when you're intersex? So phalloplasty and metoidioplasty. So we're going to start with metoidioplasty. Metoidioplasty is basically when they uh, they release the clitoris. So instead of hold, uh, the clitoris being held down by the ligaments, they cut they cut the ligaments and they release the clitoris, which then gives you kind of like 
kind of like what I've got right now, like the baby penis thing going on. And then they um, close up the vagina. What they do after that is they create the uh, urethral lengthening. So they uh, make the urethra be able to come through the very tiny hole in the small penis. So the second surgery is phalloplasty. So with phalloplasty, it's a way more invasive surgery, which um, takes way more of your, your time, your life, your energy, your mental health. But basically they, they, they chop off the skin on the forearm. They take an artery as well from the forearm and they take um, some, uh, some fat and all of that. So obviously the, the penis can have a bit of chunk in. I've got metoidioplasty and phalloplasty. I wanted two dicks, first of all, let's get that straight. Secondly, I wanted to make sure I could penetrate with, uh, with both of them as well at the same time. Because what guy wouldn't want to have two dicks? <laughs> what a sentence. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel you say that. Were you happy with that you'd done it? I'm happy that I did it now. And I'm also looking forward to um, getting uh, the rest done. Once I get my erectile device in, I'm gonna get the one where you can squeeze the balls and the dick goes up like a natural erection. I can't wait. <laughs> Squeezing the balls makes you feel a bit sick, to be honest. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the only way that that, that <laughs> getting hard. <laughs> um, if, if there's one thing that people can take away from this video about being intersex, what do you want them to be? I feel like an alien 24 seven. Like even right now sitting here, I feel like an alien because I'm talking about something which I didn't ask for. Do you get what I'm saying? I would have loved to have either been a natural born, beautiful woman with, you know, a husband and a few kids that drive me crazy and a big house and all that kind of stuff. Or I would have preferred to have just been a regular male with, um, you know, a normal working penis, um, a wife and a few kids that also drive me crazy. But I, that is what I would have wanted. I wouldn't have wanted so much confusion because the confusion is, is immense. What, what more can we do to make it easier for someone going off from their sex? I think, to be extremely honest, it's just not mentioning it a lot of the time, but it's just, it's, that's never gonna happen. People are never gonna not mention. But when someone finds out you're intersexed, they ain't ever shutting up about it. Or if, or, or they're gonna tell their friend, of course they're gonna tell their friend, because it's something that's different. It's, it's, and, when, and when something's different, obviously, you know, that people want everyone to know, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, hi, here's my intersexed friend, Rajante. And then next thing you know, the whole house party or rave or like big event that I'm at, everyone knows. Yeah, just, just, just don't make a big deal because intersex basically, like, people always think of genitalia straight away. That, well, first of all, they're confused. And then when, they, and then when you ex explain to them what it all means, then they go straight to this whole genitalia thing, yeah? I'm not gonna ask to see your penis or your vagina unless I wanna have sex with you. So why are you asking to, to see my dick? Because of like trans men and, and uh, trans women and stuff like that, intersex kind of gets like, it's, it's only just been included and that's why I do videos like this because I wanna make intersex be like, you know, something that people think about when they think about trans, they think about um, any of the LGBTQIA, I want them to think about the I and the intersex. I was, I was sat in my, in my parents' living room and it was like, I don't know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning that I actually flicked the website back on. And in the first half an hour of the website being live, we sold 30,000 pound in product. So to go from 300 quid a day to 30,000 pound in half an hour, um, everything had sold out. It was, um, it was absolutely mind blowing.